This is the Talk Show America Show. There's the place where we learn to stand tall as we all pledge allegiance to our right on the wall. Whatever happens to in God, we trust I know those words so we something to most of us. Where's the voice of the majority? Can someone please tell me? Where's my country? Where's my country? Where's my country? And welcome one and all to the Talk Show American. JR here with you. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day to listen. We certainly appreciate it very much, folks uh, here. Um, thank you for your listenership. Thank you for your following on Twitter, Facebook, Getter, Parlay, Gab. And again, as I always say, there's so many of them out there uh, to, to mention that it's uh, it's getting get very difficult to uh, keep the um, the order going. But we'll do our best to try to rem- remember others that were on that you can go to. You just go to uh, the Talk Show American there and you'll find the podcast and all this also blog posts, things of that nature that might be of interest to you. Today we're going to talk about uh, a couple of things. The war in Ukraine between Russia and, and the Ukraine is still going on. And that's kind of, you know, the story that is, is, is really out there in the news for the most part. Um, and, you know, that's still going on, so we're not going to talk about that today too much. We're going to let that go to the wayside, and you can catch up on whatever news um, uh, entity that you use to keep yourself up to date on those things. But I did want to talk about one story that's coming out. You're not going to see this on the mainstream news media, folks. You're not going to see it on ABC. You're not going to see it on CBS. You're not going to see it on NBC, uh, CS, uh, CNBC. You know all of these PMS, NBC, all of these uh, these these news organizations, CNN. You're not going to see it there, folks. The only place you're going to see this story um, is in the conservative media. Um, but it was covered by uh, a big mainstream news media newspaper, and that's being the New York Times. Um, and this is um, the story about Hunter Biden's laptop. Remember this infamous laptop that came out during the elections, Uh, this laptop that came out with all types of um, information um, that about um, Hunter Biden and his, um, a uh, partner of his, they were both on the board um, of the the Ukraine company Burinsma, uh, Burinsma, I believe it is, Uh, and there was a lot of controversy about this, plus the fact that, supposedly anyway, there were a lot of um, photographs of Hunter Biden in, in obviously precarious positions and also possibly uh, of him with underage girls in inappropriate uh, situations. So those things came out during that time. And you remember the Biden administration, especially Joe Biden, um, well, the, the Biden campaign at that point in time, especially Joe Biden, um, denying all of this, saying it was Russian disinformation, it wasn't true, um, you know, that, that he was not the you know, the the big guy that got the 10% kickback on the business dealings and everything else. But now the New York Times has come out with a story that says basically this stuff is at least, it's true that, that the laptop exists and the emails exist. And these and some of these emails even say um, what uh, Joe Biden has said was not true, proving that it's not Russian disinformation because the laptop actually existed. As we know, it went to some repair shop in Delaware. I don't know how it ended, ended up there, but it ended up there. Um, so, uh, the repair, the guy gave it to the FBI when he went on the the laptop and found the, these uh, the, these photos and things of that nature, which caused some concern. And the, the FBI took that and investigated, of course, to what extent. Obviously, during the election, uh, during the election process, the, the election campaigns, they did not do anything with this for the most part. And so, obviously, some of the information never got to who it should get to. Um, but um, the story has now come out. The New York Times has now, um, you know, put the story forward. Uh, and it's, it's a pretty comprehensive report. 
about the ongoing federal probe into Hunter Biden's tax filings, published by it, you know, it was published by the New York Times on Wednesday and confirmed the existence of the first son's, Joe Biden's son's, infamous laptop. Something that, as I said, the Biden, Biden campaign at that point in time uh, denied existed. Uh, Joe Biden himself said it was all Russian disinformation on down the line. Um, now, this this coming out now is 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 um, you know it's it's not suspect. It's I think that what's happened is it's come out now because they feel that it'll probably get drawn out by still COVID um, and obviously the war with uh, uh, Russia and and the and, and the, between Russia and the, and, and the Ukraine. I think that what they'll hopefully is is this is drawn out is not big news. Of course. None of the mainstream news media outlets are yet to report it, with the exception of the New, the New York Times. Um, the New York Post has also picked up on this and, and gone a, a bit further with it. Uh, but otherwise, you probably won't see much about this if you're not on the Internet. If you're only watching the, um, you know, the alphabet, as I call them, the alphabet news media, um, you're basically not going to find much because they're not going to cover it, folks. Uh, because they're going to have egg on their face again. Uh, again and again and again. All of these uh, allegations, uh, things uh, that came out during the campaigns, all the allegations against you know, the Bidens, things are starting to, to come true. Not only that, but you, you, now you have the investigation um, it's still going on by, by uh, Durham uh, in regards to the uh, to Clinton and her campaign and how they spied on um, then, you know, then candidate Donald Trump and also President Donald Trump. How her campaign, you know, had had people spying on on him. Remember when he, he came out and said that he was being spied on when he was running, when his campaign was being spied on? And people laughed at him. People laughed. They, you know, they, they basically, you know, they were, they, were, they were ridiculing him, saying, oh, that's ridiculous. Well, that's all coming out to be true now, folks. Uh, just like this, this, this uh, laptop, when it first came out, denials, denials, this Russian disinformation, on down the line, you know, uh, I'm not the big guy getting 10%, blah, 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 on down the line. And what happens? Now it's coming out that there's truth to, this, to these things. There's truth to the, uh, to the laptop's existence, and there's truth to the emails that were garnered from these laptops that show um, the, you know, text messages, photos, um, financial documents between Hunter Biden and his family and business associates detailing how um, Hunter Biden uh, used political leverage in his overseas business dealings. Now, there was a lot of talk about now he owed taxes, you know, taxes on foreign investment. He owed these taxes and he wasn't paying. There's was a lot of talk about that he didn't owe them or that this was, again, Russian disinformation. Well, now he's paid those taxes, folks. Um, not too long ago, he's paid those taxes. He was also, uh, he was advised that he owed those taxes and he was advised that he should register as a foreign lobbyist, uh, way, way before this ever, the, the story about this laptop ever came out way before that. I think they even knew the laptop existed and he basically never did this. And you know, people say, "Well, why does he have to, to register as a um, as a uh, you know un, under the FARA Act?" Well, the bottom line is that he was you know, um, you know using his or trying to use his father for political influence, and this is for, this is foreign lobbying, and so he would have been required by law to register. As a lobbyist, as a foreign lobbyist, which he never did, and again they they're trying to make it sound like he had you know he he wasn't doing these things, um, but now that you look at the New York Times story, um, you find out that he was because these emails actually say that they talk about this was talked about even during the campaign that they were you know the Burinsma, Bur, Burisma was trying to lobby and get get get. Uh, an audience with the pre with the vice president, then Joe Biden, and that obviously Hunter Biden was being used uh, to do that. Now 
he's lobbying the president for a foreign or a foreign entity, a foreign country, a uh, foreign company. It, you know, obviously he would have to have have registered as a foreign lobbyist, and he's if he's making money, you know, um, you know, via that, then he has to pay taxes on it. So this is the story so far. This is what's coming out now. This is the only part that's really coming out right now as the you know, um, and, you know, the center of the investigation. But I think it's going to, you're going to find out there's more. Um, so um, federal prosecutors have looked into these emails uh, between Hunter Biden and, and his former business uh, associate. Um, and, and these were recovered from the laptop. So they're looking into this. So, you know, they're not looking into it if there's nothing there, folks. I will tell you right now. Um, they're not going to, dis- to, to say, oh, we're going to do this big investigation if there's nothing there. Um, most of the scrutinized uh, or some of the scrutinized content um, was between Hunter Biden and Devin Archer, who was uh, his associate um, in Bur- Burisma. Um, and they, uh, they basically... Uh, you know, we're, we're at the behest of the of Burisma. Uh, you know, they wanted to lobby um, Vice President Joe Biden. Now, um, now, people may not know this, but Archer was sentenced last month in an unrelated fraud case uh, and has been com- uh, cooperating with the feds in their probe uh, of Hunter Biden along with Hunter Biden's um, uh, the, the you know, Hunter Biden's uh, uh, ex-partner, who he has a child with, with with, with uh, that probe as well, and that has to do a lot to do with the financial part of this, which is seems to what they, they seem to be most interested in. Um, according to the New York Times, the emails between Hunter Biden and Archer uh, and others regarding uh, their international business activity came from the files and. Uh, the publication obtained from uh, that appears to have come from that laptop that was abandoned by uh, uh, Hunter Biden in that Delaware repair shop. So, so according to the Times, also people familiar with the emails and the investigation confirmed their their authenticity to the Times, which is is important because you want to make sure that you know you're getting accurate information. So here we go, folks. Something that was denied is 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 there again. Um, it, it, it's rearing its ugly head again. Uh, all buried because of the um, the uh, the election. All buried. All covered up. All oh, it's Russian dif- disinformation. It isn't true. It's you know, it's Trump campaign disinformation. It, it, all the all this stuff. And now it's coming out that this this laptop existed, and so do these emails. Um, so according to the times, um, the laptop was confirmed as, as I said, and also, uh, they revealed that Hunter Biden has paid off a tax liability of over a million dollars a year after he announced he was under investigation for defrauding the IRS. Uh, so he's been under investigation for failing to pay those taxes since his father was vice president. But the inquiry broadened in 2018 to look into how his international business dealings intersected with the President uh, Biden's political career. And at that point in time, obviously, he was the the vice president. Um, So there's there's much to be uh, to be said here about uh, about this uh, this revelation from, of all places, the New York Times. So I'm certainly no friend of conservatives and certainly not a right wing or a conservative uh, news pub, news uh, organization. So for them to come out with this stuff, folks, um, really shows you that uh, this, this, this truth to what's being said here. And I think that at some point in time, you may find some other things, but the big, the big question for me now here is, um, you know, they're, they're talking about the financial dealings right now uh, of, of, of uh, Hunter Biden, him not paying the taxes. So this is where they, I think they're trying to center it on right now. But the big thing is, what's going to come out in, in a little bit? What's going to come out about, you know, whether or not the big guy was getting 10%? This is lobbying. This is lobbying. And, uh, you know, all these denials 
by then Vice President Biden and 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 now and, and uh, you know now President Biden. Uh, it's it's a it's a bombshell revelation. Uh, it, you know, it's not being covered by the mainstream news media. You're not going to see it. They're not going to talk about it because, first of all, they're going to have egg on their faces if they do. The other thing is, they're certainly not going to do anything to try to um, to, to uh, take down uh, Joe Biden at this point in time. So um, it's interesting to see where this is going to go, and we're going to cover it a little bit further, you know, after the break that's coming up. But. Uh, Right now, it's only they're only talking about financial, the tax things, but I think you'll get into other things as we go along. We'll be talking more about this when we come back from the break. Stay tuned, folks. You're listening to the Talk Show America Show. Are you 60 plus and love to travel? Introducing the Senior Travel Discount Network, brought to you by Low Cost Airlines. Call us anytime, day or night, and save up to 75% on your airline and hotel reservations. We can help you save a ton of money to fly almost anywhere. We have inside discounts on over 500 airlines and 500,000 hotels worldwide. And when you call and mention the discount code 60 plus, we'll give you an extra free night with your qualified air and hotel reservation. Now you can get the best prices on air and hotel reservations with your phone. We make it easy and fast for you to save money and book a trip. Remember, call the Senior Travel Discount Network. Mention the discount code 60 plus for your free hotel night with your qualified reservation. Call now. 800-643-3049. 800-643-3049. That's 800-643-3049. Alana was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma and it's cancer. As a parent, when you're told this type of news, you're gonna do whatever you can do for your babies. When we got to St. Jude is when I realized that, no, you're not gonna get a bill for anything. I don't have to worry about it. They're saying we're gonna help save her and we're not gonna charge you anything. This is what we do. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Finding cures, saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. Okay, folks, we're back here from the break. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day to listen. We certainly appreciate it very much indeed, folks. And just a quick reminder, again, you can um, find me on Twitter uh, at Talk Show America. Just at Talk Show America, all one word. If you're on Twitter, you'll find me. Um, on Getter, uh, the same thing, at Talk Show America. Um, uh, as Listed as the Talk Show American and on Gab uh, is uh, the Talk Show American. And on, as I had several other platforms, uh, Parlay as the Talk Show American. You can find me on those platforms. Uh, Facebook um, is Talk Show, uh, Facebook at Talk Show America Media, the slash for Talk Show America Media. You'll find, uh, you find me there too. But if you, look, if you put the Talk Show American on Facebook, you'll get to the, to the page as well. So several ways to get there. Um, you can also go to, the, to my website. Uh, TalkShowAmerica.com TalkShowAmerica.com and that'll bring you to the, to the uh, Talk Show American website uh, where there's uh, several things there, podcasts um, and other things that, uh, that uh, you know, the latest editions of episodes of the podcast that you can listen to. Alright, we want to get back to what we were talking to here uh, we're talking about here, excuse me um, and that is um, Hunter Biden's laptop and now the New York Times obviously has come out and and uh, said that uh, this you know, the, the laptop does exist. Uh, there are emails on there that do, um, you know, that do uh, are being investigated. Um, but according to an, another story that came out um, on top of that one that was from the New York Times, but this this story more elaborates on it. Hunter Biden was told in 2016 and 2017 that he had unpaid taxes on foreign income, and was alerted. Uh, to the possibility that he would have to register as a FARA lobbyist, a, a foreign lobbyist. Now, FARA stands for Foreign Agents Registration Act, and it was enacted in 1938. It basically um, says, uh, you know, s- says that it requires certain agents of foreign principles who are engaged in political activities or other activities um, to, to register. Um, and, you know, and this is uh, also if, whether they it, it disclose it requires you to disclose requirements and other legal obligations uh, on any individual or entity that be- becomes an agent of a foreign principal. Now, 
Hunter Biden being on the board of Burisma, the Ukraine company, um, and him basically lobbying his father, then vice president of the United States, uh, for Burisma, um, is basically being uh, acting as a foreign agent. And obviously any money he made from this, he would have been required to pay taxes on. And also he would have uh, most likely, and I, and I don't want to say 100% for sure, because it certainly looks like even the New York Times report and this report are saying the possibility. Uh, but I would think that most likely they would fall into this, regardless of who he is and who his father is. It doesn't matter if he's Joe Biden's son. If he's working for a foreign company, in this case he was, in this case it was um, Burisma out of the Ukraine, he would have been required to register as a foreign agent, in my opinion. But that's my opinion only. Again, there could be some other legal reasons why. Um, I don't know what they would be, but the bottom line is it's, it's certainly raised as, uh, it's been raised as a possibility. So um, he was alerted years ago to legal issues about unpaid taxes on foreign income and the potential of having to register as a, as a foreign lobbyist under the, under the uh, Foreign Agents Registration Act. And apparently, obviously, this didn't happen. Now, the memos from business, uh, from business associates, accountants, and law partners were turned over in December of 2019 to the FBI on that laptop that Hunter Biden had uh, reportedly abandoned at a Delaware, Delaware repair shop. Um, these uh, memos provide supporting evidence to suspicious financial transactions flagged to the Treasury Department between 2016 and 2019 by banks that were revealed by a 2020 Senate investigation. Now, you didn't hear a lot about this because obviously this is all being, being covered up uh, because of the fact that uh, Joe Biden was running for President of the United States. Now, two of the most um, tantalizing memos, if you want to call it that, uh, involve uh, Hunter Biden's in relationship with uh, Burisma Holdings, the Ukrainian gas firm, uh, long re regarded by the United States as corrupt, that they had hired Hunter, Bi Hunter Biden and his now uh, convicted business partner, although it has nothing to do with this investigation, Devin Archer, to the board in spring of two, uh, 2014, 2014. It coincided, the hiring coincided with, with a trip by then Vice President Joe Biden um, to Kyiv as President Obama's newly appointed man, uh, point man for the U, uh, U.S. Ukraine policy. So here we go, folks. The computer records show that just as word of the Burisma hiring became public, Hunter Biden was looped into an email string with Ukrainian company executives and one of his American law uh, partners laying out an aggressive plan to lobby U.S. agencies, according to this report. There was a pointed discussion about gaining influence inside the Obama-Biden administration for Burisma without having to register as a lobbyist under the Foreign Agent Registration Act. So in other words, they want to basically skirt the laws, what they want to do, wanted to do. But how can you do that, folks? How can you lobby the Vice President of the United States for a foreign entity and not uh, be considered a foreign, uh, a foreign uh, agent? Even though you may come from the United States, you may, your, your citizenship may be here, you're acting on behalf of that company. That company is a foreign company, so therefore, uh, you know, why wouldn't you be required to register as a foreign agent? That's why I say, I don't, you know, we can't say 100% for sure that it'd be required to. I would think basically what I see, um, you know, what this act was created for, uh, he would have to. But certainly also have to report, um, you know, uh, financial information and pay the taxes on that financial information. So, um, this is amazing. Uh, this was from a law partner at Boys Schiller and Flexner, and it was um, it was one in in one of the memos. It said Devin, Devin and Hunter. This was uh, him, uh, the, someone from the law the law firm addressing him, saying the immediate plan is to reach out to the Energy and you respectively as State Department um, at the State Department to introduce them to 
Burisma and update them on Burisma's current situation. Then it goes on to say we can just go in there. We can't just go in there with a hard ask, but it's often the case that the conversation is open to ask, assuming it goes well. Now, this was dated on May 12th of 2014. Um, at that time, Hunter Biden was joining the, the Burisma board, and he also worked at, at, at the law firm and was directing some of uh, Burisma's legal work to the firm. So uh, there's some questions here, you know. Uh, this, this has been obviously been go on, going on for a while. Um, so, uh, you know, some of these things that were being said, um, the memos openly discussed a desire to avoid lobbyists. It says, we at BSF will lead all this work and can create the, the uh, can, excuse me, can execute the political and legal work right up to the line where we would need to register as lobbyists, but I don't want to, uh, to register under the uh, lobby, uh, Lobbying Disclosure Act or the Foreign Agents Registration Act, the law partner wrote. Now, this is in things that they found. This is in the report. When, when I post the podcast, folks, I will post the, the stories where you can find this, this information yourself. Um, so later, she, so I'm assuming that that's the person that wrote this, um, inquired about whether Burisma had any American uh, subsidiaries so it could lobby through them and not be viewed as a foreign entity. So <laughs> this, it asked Devin this question. says, Devin, does Burisma have any related company registered in the United States, a subsidiary of any sort even? She asked in an email uh, string with Hunter Biden, which Hunter Biden was copied to. And according to Archer, he wrote back that they did not. So here you go, folks. So if they don't have an, uh, a subsidiary, subsidiary in America, I think they would have, been, would have been required to register as foreign agents. And obviously that apparently didn't happen. Um, so the, uh, they tried to... Um, get a hold of this law partner uh, and, uh, you know, and ver get verification from her, but she wouldn't return repeated calls. Nothing new there, right? Um, so, you know, as we, as we said before, the New York Times reported um, last wen uh, Wednesday that uh, the federal investigation to hunt by foreign business dealings began in 2018 and is focused on issues like whether he legally was obligated to register under the FARA Act, which, uh, and whether he violated tax laws or laundered any money. So all of this stuff is coming out, folks. When, when it was starting to come out during the, uh, the, the election, it was obviously suppressed as much as it could be, and for, for, for a good reason, because obviously it was already causing problems, but it would have, made, it would have caused worse problems. But, the, you know, the, den the denial uh, by... Um, by uh, you know then candidate Biden, vice president, and uh, can you know candidate Biden, he wasn't vice president then; he was a presidential candidate. Um, the denial was just uh, just amazing. I mean, you know, to say they're all lies, it's it's Russian disinformation, it's the Trump campaign disinformation. Um, so you know, all of this came, you know was was coming out while his while uh, Biden was running uh, for president. Now, when um, Joe Biden was elected, Hunter Biden then acknowledged that he was under tax investigation. And of course, he was denied any wrongdoing, which would be what anybody does when they're being you know, accused of something. And, and again, um, that, that uh, tax was reportedly around a million dollars. And he's, has, he's, he's paid it now. He's paid the, the tax. Now, if you didn't do anything wrong and you don't owe the money, then why would you be paying the tax? Of course, a, a million dollars to them people is probably like pocket change. You know, so, uh, you know, but I still, you know, say that if, if you don't owe the money, why are you paying it? <clears throat> you know, the, obviously you owe the money, in my opinion. Um, but he's, you know, according to Just the News, which is where this story is coming from, and it's a very good, um, very good uh, news site, by the way, folks. If you want uh, to get good conservative information and, and not and 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 it to be accurate and reliable, 
Um, justthenews.com. Justthenews.com is the place to go. Justthenews.com. It's John Solomon is the uh, is is the person, uh, the CEO and the editor in chief who runs it, and a very reliable journalist in my opinion. Um, really digs deep into things, uh, and uh, his publication justthenews.com does the same. So if you get a chance, and this is not a paid endorsement, uh, I don't get paid for this. I I don't make any money off of it. Um, Justthenews.com uh, is is the place to get uh, this this information is from good a good reliable source where you don't have to worry about it you know maybe being sensationalized or anything else um, a good good place to get it so uh, according to them according to Justthenews.com you know dot com more than a uh, you know a, the memos obtained more than a year ago show the president you know son Hunter Biden was warned as early as 2016 by a business associate and accountant that he failed to pay taxes on large payments he had received from Bru- uh, from Burisma. I keep saying Bruins, but it's Burisma. For instance, just four days before uh, the, um, President Trump assumed the presidency, a business colleague warned Hunter Biden he had not paid taxes on approximately $400,000 that had been paid by Burisma in 2014 alone. Now, in that, uh, there's a memo in it. It says, in 2014, you joined the Burisma board, and we still need to amend your 2014 returns to reflect the unreported Bur- Burisma income. And, th- and that was um, Rosemont Seneca executive Eric Sh- uh, Sherwin, I believe it is, uh, um, writing Hunter Biden in January 16th of 2017 on an email. That is approximately 400,000 extra, so your income in 2014 was close to $1,247,328. Isn't that just wonderful, folks? Um, and again, in this story, which you can find there, on, and I'll, I'll leave the, the, um, the link to it in the um, show notes uh, on the uh, podcast, it has um, the documentation to where you can see this yourself. Okay, so you, so you know that it's not just something that's being, being made up. So um, it's, it's, it's really amazing. It really is. We're going to be right back, folks, after these messages. Stay tuned. Are you 60 plus and love to travel? Introducing the Senior Travel Discount Network, brought to you by Low Cost Airlines. Call us anytime, day or night, and save up to 75% on your airline and hotel reservations. We can help you save a ton of money to fly almost anywhere. We have inside discounts on over 500 airlines and 500,000 hotels worldwide. And when you call and mention the discount code 60 plus, we'll give you an extra free night with your qualified air and hotel reservation. Now you can get the best prices on air and hotel reservations with your phone. We make it easy and fast for you to save money and book a trip. Remember, call the Senior Travel Discount Network. Mention the discount code 60 plus for your free hotel night with your qualified reservation. Call now. 800-643-3049. 800-643-3049. That's 800-643-3049. This is a St. Jude moment. Ashton was a high-level athlete, and in an instant, your world flips, and your healthy five-year-old competitive cheerleader has a brain tumor. And the physician was like, your best option is St. Jude. Receiving treatment that was life-saving for our child and knowing that that treatment would be of no cost to us was a huge weight lifted. Learn more at stjude.org. Liberal enemy number one. JR heard here. On the radio. Radio. Talk show America. No political correctness here. All right, folks, we're back here on the Talk Show America show. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day to listen. We certainly appreciate it very much indeed. Um, One thing I wanted to mention before we get too far along is uh, the blog, the new blog is up, folks, on TalkShowAmerica.com. That's TalkShowAmerica.com. Again, that's uh, um, the new blog. It's, it, it no longer, longer redirects to um, TalkShowAmerica.blogspot.com, which you still can go to and still has content up there. Um, and it refreshes uh, on a regular basis. But uh, the main blog now is the 
you know, obviously the Talk Show American mm-hmm. at mm-hmm. Talk Show America. Dot com. Not TalkShowAmerican.com, but TalkShowAmerica, without the N, dot com. Uh, and uh, check it out. You can email me, um, JR, the letter J, the letter R, at TalkShowAmerica.com about the show, uh, um, about the blog. Uh, it's just uh, if you want to say hi, uh, whatever. Um, we appreciate uh, those of you who follow us on Facebook. We appreciate uh, those of you who follow us on Twitter, especially, because we're our main base for the social media is twitter right now we still use it um there are a lot of others but unfortunately for there's so many others and i've got to try to get those all set up and uh, they're all set up but i've got to get those all to where people can under can see the uh, different places they can go because i know some people don't care for twitter some people don't care for facebook i understand that and i understand why um certainly uh uh, there, there are there are many times and many uh, you know, good reasons why you you don't, but um, so that's uh, the new things that have come out with with Talk Show America. Uh, as I said, TalkShowAmerica.com, TalkShowAmerica.com for the blog. Um, and if you want to email me, Jr. the letter J, letter R at TalkShowAmerica.com, and um, more than happy to to uh, you know. Um, read your comments and more than happy to email you back um, and go from there. Like I said, good and bad, pro and con. Um, you know, we 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 uh, we have no problem with um, getting you know getting the, the cons as well because we know we're not perfect all the time. Now I just talked to you about Buttigieg talking about not uh, you know that the Biden administration really doesn't want to gallop after permanent solutions, especially on the idea of of reauthorizing the Keystone Pipeline. Um, but also, folks, um, what came out um, from that whole, th- that whole uh, interview is us possibly with this Iranian deal, uh, this new Iranian deal they're working on, with us possibly um, getting oil from Iran again. He said, you know, again, uh, Buttigieg says, this is uh, buying oil from Iran is on the table as the Biden administration imposes restrictions on domestic drilling. Again, we come back to this again. Uh, it's getting to be uh, kind of odd uh, that we're, you know, we're, we're in an energy crisis. We are right now. We're, you know, basically, um, you know, the prices are going up and people, it's, it's hard for people to afford this. You know, this, there I saw some price tags from some, some places in the country that were like $7 a gallon. That's utterly ridiculous, folks. How do, do they expect people to live? How do they expect, well, they, they, they don't. All this is part of this whole thing of getting us away from fossil fuels into alternative energy. Now, I'm not against that completely. Don't get me wrong. I don't think that that's a bad thing. Um, I just think it's a bad thing to just one day decide, boom, click, we're not doing this anymore. And this is what we're doing because it's going to cause problems. It's going to cause big problems for us. So... So we have to, you know, we, we, we have to sit back and um, we have to watch these things. And right now, this is all, some of this is just being buried because we're talking about the Ukraine and, and, and Russia, uh, you know. And so this, this, this is where the problem lies. You know, a lot of this stuff is being buried, folks. Um, and I don't want to talk about it too much. But, you know, imagine right now in, in the deal, in this, in this uh, nuclear in this deal that I don't want to say nuclear. In this deal with Iran over nuclear power and things of this nature, um, suddenly uh, Buttigieg is saying that the, the uh, uh, you know deal with Iran could include them us getting oil from them, buying oil from them. Uh, this is crazy, but it's, it's what what they're saying. Um, as as you know, as, you know, while we're, we're imposing restrictions on domestic drilling. Uh, you know, and the pipeline. Uh, just to me, you know, this is you know, and it because it's all about the green energy, folks. Don't let anybody fool you. I, I'm not saying that the Russian Ukraine invasion is about green energy, but it's all about the green energy as far as this administration is going. Um, because the more they can say, "Oh, look at what oil is costing," and everything else, the more they can try to push for the the green energy, the electric. You know the the soaring gas prices, you know, are, are one way that they're going to try to, you know, well, we'll, you know, we can, you know, 
we can do this and you can uh, ease we can ease soaring gas prices we can ease the pain at the pump you know because you won't be using gas that much uh you know no real solutions were offered folks while they're, while they're talking about this somehow or another we've got to get you know uh, we've got to get um domestic uh production back up there um, you know, as you know, Biden killed the, the Keystone pipeline right away and halted new oil and gas leases. Uh, we're still importing uh, Russia, uh, Russian oil despite the, um, his threats of nuclear war on us, despite the fact that they're sanction, we're sanctioning him, but we're still buying 22 million barrels of oil a day from them. Uh, it's, it's, just ama- it's just amazing. Well, I don't know if that's a day. I'll have to find out. But irregardless. Uh, and now we're talking about possibly buying, they're talking about possibly buying oil from Iran. This is just getting out of control, folks. Getting out of control. We cannot sustain this. Um, our reliance on foreign oil, is, is, it's, it's going to weaken us even more than we already are. And this is the problem. As, as you see, folks, and as you saw, as I illustrated earlier, with the Ukraine, um, uh, excuse me, with the Russians, um, Starting to, you know, to, to they have the energy over there in Europe. They, you know, a good part of it comes from them. Now they've got this nuclear power plant. They can even, you know, do more with it. Cut, cut off more um, energy to to the Europeans. This is why they're not uh, that that uh, you know um, big on getting involved in in the uh, in in the Ukraine fight. However, they are. They, I know they are. You know, providing them with some. Um, providing them with some uh, weapons and things of that nature uh, and logistical help, which is, which is better than, you know, them completely not doing anything. But uh, it's amazing what's being said right now. And like I said, under the guise of, you know, with the, with the Russian Ukraine con- conflict and everybody thinking, you know, Oh geez, I don't want it. We don't want to get nuked. We, you know, <laughs> under that guise, you know, there was all this talk about Iran um, you know, we're renegotiating that deal, um, and part of it could be that we're going to buy oil from Iran. I, I, I just, it's, it's crazy. Um, it's crazy. I mean, and again, the, the, the statement made that, uh, that uh, Buddha just says that we have to make sure that we're not galloping uh, after permanent solutions to immediate short-term problems. It, that doesn't even make any sense to me. Why, why wouldn't a permanent solution to a short-ter- short-term problem be, be something good? You have to look at the future. They're not looking at the future. They're looking at what's going on right now. And they're looking at pushing their green agenda. I'm telling you, the, the greenies are controlling this, are, are, are what the Biden administration is looking for here. This is one of the reasons why they have no interest in doing that. And it will probably continue to be that way. But folks, at some point in time, we could be Europe. Um, you know, uh, it, it's going to take a while, but, you know, we still have you know, our own ways, our own, uh, ways of uh, producing energy here. But you look at Europe, they're going to be in a stranglehold, you know, because that, um, because that, uh, uh, they because of them controlling the gas, much of the oil, and now with one of the biggest nuclear power plants in Europe, which is the one they took over, and I can't remember the name. I, I'm sorry, but you'll find it in the news anyway. Um, this is all, you know, we could be in that same situation. And then what are we going to do then? You know, you think energy prices are up there now. Wait till you see what's going to happen, uh, you know, if obviously if we came, came into that situation. Do we, you know, should we, rely, should, we, should we rely on Russian oil? Now, I'm not saying that we shut the Russian oil right off. Don't get me wrong. It's not what I'm saying because I, you know, but, but at the same time, we have to start thinking of ways of not relying on that. And that means if we have to uh, open up new things, it's, it, may, it, it may take a year or so to get some other places, go, you know, some of the production up there again. But... It didn't take uh, President Trump long to get things going. So, you know, we have to look at the future, folks. And, uh, you know, all this, because right now what they're trying to, they're almost trying to, like, get Americans to think, hey, if we don't go along with this guy, there's going to be a nuclear war. Well, you know, I, I like I said before, I, I highly doubt that, folks. I don't think things are that wacky yet. 
Of course, you know, I could be wrong, and who knows? You never know what's going to happen anymore. But I don't think he's that, that Putin's that wacky. Um, certainly, uh, what what if you have a nuclear um, war? It's gonna it's gonna be all out nuclear war, World War Three. It's not going to be just certain areas. Um, what's going to be left? So you know, it's you know, I mean, it's it's like you know, some kid going to the sandbox and taking over the, the sandbox, um, but then there's nobody there to bully or whatever. So what do you got? You got a sandbox that you're the only one that deal, dealing with it. It's it's basically would be that kind of that idea. You know, it's like, you know, what have I got left? All all uh, radioactive cities and uh, things of that nature to control. It, it, it makes really no sense. I mean, you know, I could be wrong, but I don't think that I am. I don't think they're ready for that, folks. I don't. Uh, so, all right, let's see if we can move on to a couple other things here that I wanted to try to get out. Um, I talked about the... the, um, uh, the Tires there, I, only because I thought that was kind of uh, kind of funny. Um, it's it it really was uh, the Durham investigation, folks. That seems to be heating up again. But again, you're not hearing anything about it because why? Because right now, um, the the you know the the uh, Russian Ukraine invasion uh, you know is is everything right now is everything uh, but there's been several more developments in the, um, the spygate scandal basically uh the durham investigation the durham probe um and if this is all being overshadowed obviously by by this as well um there's been several um depositions that have been filed um some people have pled the fifth on this there was an article that came out um In uh, I believe it was last week uh, that talked about that talked about how this is um, this February twenty eighth when it came out uh, how this you know this since Friday several developments uh, have exposed more of the behind the scenes details of the special counsel investigation into Spygate so it's it, so these things are all being uh, being um, uh, overshadowed by again. Uh, this uh, the Russian uh, Ukraine invasion. That's all. Uh, that's all being being overshadowed. You know, this is all being overshadowed by that now. So it's amazing what's you know the things are going on. You almost I, I don't want to say it's 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 obviously not. You know, well, hey, Putin, do this so like I don't have to worry about this this Russian probe, the, the Russian. Uh, a probe in which Hillary Clinton obviously is in in the middle of this her campaign, um, but it's almost like that's the case. Uh, I ju I just I I don't think that that's really true per se, folks. Um, but there's been a couple of su more subpoenas issued. I don't want to get into this too much because it get. But if you can find you can find this article on Federalist.com. Um, it's uh, it's a good article and it talks about. Uh, Four new things that uh, we've learned from the uh, special counsel investigation. So those that's one thing that you might want to take a look at. It's the Federalist.com. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you look at the four new things learned from the special counsel investigation. Uh, an Arizona study recently just found, folks, um, that... Uh, 200,000 ballots counted, uh, counted uh, were with misma mismatched signatures. Um, there's a few other things. Uh, another uh, uh, Wisconsin voting probe uh, that's going on uh, that's behind the scenes. I didn't realize I'm running out of time here, so I'm going to end up having to say we'll wait till next week to talk about these things. Folks, or I'll do it in the JR's take if I get a chance. I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy day to listen. We certainly appreciate it very much, folks, indeed here, folks. And don't forget, TalkShowAmerica.com. TalkShowAmerica.com for the blog. Um, and uh, we appreciate very much uh, you going there. Also, if you want to email me, jr at TalkShowAmerica.com. The letter J, the letter R, at TalkShowAmerica.com. Have a great day, st folks. Stay safe. Have a great week. And uh, if anything big comes up, we'll get out the JR's take. We'll tell you all about it. Thank you. Have a great day. God bless America.
from above. 